Hello and welcome back to 8-Bit Keys. This is going to be a special two-part episode where we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Reface series from Yamaha, particularly the Reface CS and the Reface DX. Now there's two other Reface series, but we're not going to be looking at those, uh, mostly because I only care about these two, and these are the two people who are always asking me to review. So what are these products exactly? The best way I can explain what these products are would be to compare it to this NES Classic or this uh, C64 Mini. So these products are, let's face it, partly they're designed to capitalize on nostalgia, but also they're a way for people to experience these games without having to use vintage hardware. Instead, they can use modern hardware that's reliable and let's face it, also inexpensive um, to experience the same games. Well, that's what the Reface series is from Yamaha. They're basically modern products designed to give you that feel and experience of the old synthesizers. So the CS series, of course, is designed uh, for subtractive synthesis. This is the type of synthesis that was common from the 1960s all the way through the mid-1980s. Um, the DX series, of course, capitalizes on FM synthesis, which is um, what was used in the DX7 and the DX100 and, and uh, many other FM synthesizers. And this was a very popular type of sound to be heard in pop music from around 1983 to the late 1980s. Just to give you a ballpark on price, I bought both of these on Amazon for $283 a piece. So much more expensive than a toy, but much less expensive than a high-end keyboard. Okay, so we're going to start with the DX in this episode, and you'll see why later. But um, let's go ahead and unbox it so you can see how it comes from the factory. So one of the reasons that I wanted to review these Reface keyboards is because so many people are always emailing me asking me for a recommendation for a vintage keyboard. And in many cases, I think one of these Reface keyboards might actually fit the bill better than a vintage keyboard. And while these are certainly small and cute, uh, these are not toys. Uh, these are well-made professional products. Um, for example, if you look on the rear, you have all the same ports as a professional keyboard would have, such as a quarter-inch output jacks, a sustain pedal, and of course, MIDI and USB. Uh, the way the MIDI works is you can use this little adapter cable here uh, to get your old-school MIDI connections. It can technically run on six AA batteries in a compartment on the bottom, but personally, I'd rather connect it up to the mains power. Let's power it on. It goes through this little boot up sequence where it tests all of the lights. It has two tiny little speakers at each end of the keyboard. Now, these aren't loud enough to do any sort of public performance, but they are perfectly adequate for playing around at home. Of course, I'm going to plug in the line outputs uh, to record whatever I play here, so it'll be clearer for you. Also, you can turn these little speakers off by holding down the lowest D key, like this, during the power up cycle. It will even show you on the screen that the speakers are disabled. In fact, if you look at the owner's manual, there are uh, actually a variety of other settings that can be controlled in a similar fashion with some of the other keys. And what's interesting is that these are all the same between all of the Reface models, so not just the DX. There are eight different instrument buttons and four different banks, totaling uh, 32 instruments. You can change banks by just pressing the bank button, and uh, the default instrument is this digichord. Now, the first thing I want to show you is this octave selector. It has five different positions, which means that uh, even though this keyboard only has 37 keys, you can move the keyboard lower or higher, covering almost every possible key of a standard 88 key piano. And while there aren't enough keys to play any fancy piano pieces from Mozart or Beethoven, I think you'll find that if you're recording a multi-track song, it shouldn't be a problem. And um, there's also a little pitch bend wheel. So they've tried to include some of the most popular default DX7 instruments. Um, this is the motion pad. The next one I'll show you is Legend EP. Uh, this sound is so iconic from the 80s. Uh, for example, see if you recognize this. I don't even know how to play that song, I'm probably just playing it wrong, but I bet you still recognize it just from the sound of the instrument. In fact, I could sit here for hours playing different pieces from bands like Genesis or Chicago and you'd hear this instrument in just about everything. Um, this is Dynalead. This is Dark Bass. Now, this was used for uh, many punchy bass lines.
Oh, and the tubular bell. Uh, this is one of the most iconic sounds of the DX7. Um, I'll play you a few example clips, but they're going to be super short because I don't want to get any uh, copyright strike from these. So yeah, you'd be amazed at the number of times you've probably heard this sound without realizing it, uh, not to be confused with the future bell, which sounds a little different. You might recognize it in a higher octave like this. Um, for example, listen to this song. So this bass was used in quite a few things, uh, see if you recognize this. Well, rats, I can't figure out the notes, but uh, here's a short video clip. This is Cloudpad, um, a little less aggressive sounding instrument. Here's Ambipluck. <laughs> and the Marimba. And FM Brass. And the last one I'll show you, Starpad. And of course you aren't limited to the 32 instruments on here. You can modify these instruments by pressing edit and then you can use these uh, little arrows to change the parameters of all four operators. Now, this is far too complicated to explain here though. I will also mention the Reface series has eight voices, which means it's polyphonic, but it's not multi-timbral. Now you may be wondering what that means. Well, from a perspective of playing the keyboard with your hands, it's, it's meaningless. But if you have it connected to a computer, it means that all eight voices will always produce the same sounds such as marimba in this case. If it were multi-timbral, that means you could have several different instruments at the same time as long as you didn't exceed your eight channels. But uh, this keyboard can't do that, so you'll have to record each piece of the song separately. And now I have a little surprise for you. I recently got back from a trip to Austin, Texas. So why was I there? Well, partly because I was attending an event called Time Machine, which is a big artificial intelligence conference. I was invited there by the organizer, who is a fan of my channel, but not just me. He also invited Anders Jensen to fly all the way from Norway to Austin <laughs> so that he could play music live at this event. So uh, he flew straight to Austin and I drove down there to meet up with him and of course watch him play. I apologize for the quality of the video as it was very dark. Um, so when we were done, uh, we drove back to Dallas so that we could record this. And so this is the third time I've had the privilege of having Anders Jensen here in person to demonstrate a keyboard. Now you might have seen on the video we did together at uh, in Germany at the Toman facility, uh, he'd already composed a song on the Reface DX, but he used a couple of other keyboards along with it. So I asked him if he would compose a brand new song using nothing but the Reface DX because, well, that's how we do things on 8-bit keys. <laughs> and so um, here we are. Except that the D, uh, the DX doesn't have any drum sounds. So I dug up my Roland CR1000, which is, as you can see, kind of like, uh, it looks like the, D, uh, the D50 from Roland, which also competed with the DX7 at the time in the 80s, which this one is modeled after. Yeah. So there's a tie-in. Yeah, and so it's from the same time period, essentially, yeah. as what this is supposed to be mimicking. So exactly. it's, it's so. a pretty good fit.
So all you hear are sounds from the Roland CR1000 and the DX. Okay, so just to kind of round out this episode, so I mean, I've already told you most of the features of the keyboard and what more or less my opinions are on it, but since Anders is here, I thought, uh, let's get your opinion. What, what do you think of the Reface DX? The Reface series is a good entry-level keyboard for everybody who wants to, to start making music from scratch. Maybe the DX is better than the other models because it has it's got more, um, more velocity sensitivity, uh, better sound. A, a broader palette. Um, it may not give you all the sounds you need uh, in terms of, you know, full bass lines, stuff like that. So, but you can start with it, and you can build your own kind of like sound as yeah. you go along. So, and you know, I'd say this this is not really like a toy. It's it's a no. professional product, but it it's is. but it's very small. It's cute. It's it's a fairly capable device and it's it's built really well i mean it can take a lot of pounding the way the <laughs> the keys are made it's not built like a casio or, or something like that yeah. so they built yeah. it in that, that in mind i think and uh, mm. although all the keyboards are uh, they're not multi-timbre which means that you have to play each part by itself and then you go back and you play another part you cannot play multiple different instruments at the, at one, uh, at the same time Okay, so that about wraps it up for this episode. Um, I'm going to do a follow-up with the Yamaha Reface CS in the next video. And hopefully that will be coming up in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.